Hello and welcome back to Parisia's 33-day preparation for consecration to Jesus through Joseph. It is, of course, day 21. And this morning we have a very special guest joining us, Father Robert Spitzer. Hello, good evening, and how are you today? I'm doing just great. It's actually afternoon over here, and uh, it's a beautiful one in Southern California. Well, it's an absolute delight uh, to speak with you and uh, welcome to Perusia World, our online community as well. So, Father, for those who may be meeting you for the very first time, I'd like to ask the question, who is Father Robert Spitzer, SJ? Well, aside from being someone uh, very much in love with God, um, uh, which uh, I shouldn't say aside from it, I mean, uh, uh, beyond it, uh, in, in the sense Amen. of just formalisms, I'll just say this, uh, I'm a Jesuit priest. I uh, joined the Society of Jesus way back in 1974. Uh, and um, uh, today I run an institute called uh, the Majus Center of Reason and Faith. So we look at the intersection of science and, and reason and faith, mostly science, philosophy and faith, but uh, social sciences, anthropology as well. And uh, also, um, Prior to that time, I was the president of Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington for about 11 years and uh, uh, been around uh, uh, from Rome over to uh, uh, Boston, over to Washington, D.C., uh, to Spokane, uh, Washington, and now down to Southern California. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. And I can't thank you enough for your work in science as well. Uh, the way I understand it, there are, you know, three kind of ways of knowing right down the bottom being that of the empirical sciences, the, the mm -hmm. observation mm -hmm. and testing using the scientific method. Mm -hmm. and then above that on the hierarchy, we've got philosophy because you can't do science without the philosophy of science, but then yeah. right at the top, you know, those that overarching way of knowing is, of course, theology. You're across all three, aren't you, Father? Yeah, actually, I was very fortunate. I, uh, I um, actually did uh, do my PhD in uh, philosophy, you know, with the emphasis on philosophy of science and metaphysics, uh, but um, also uh, definitely, you know, interested in uh, space-time curvature and time uh, in the area of physics, and especially, you know, um, what happened uh, uh, you know, prior to the beginning of physical time, which is the big question. And of course, uh, taking a look too at uh, intelligence and the manifestation of intelligence in the free parameters of our universe. And uh, so I have a variety of scientific uh, interests that uh, coincide with the philosophy of science and the metaphysical interests. And of course, the metaphysical and philosophy of science, I just touch upon theology uh, unavoidably. I, I did my actual, um, you know, theology degree in Rome, but uh, also um, uh, went on to do biblical uh, studies there in uh, Weston School uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So um, that's uh, that's me in a, in a nutshell, mm -hmm. but it, uh, it certainly leads to a very entertaining interior mental life uh, going on both in the thought world and in the prayer world. So uh, I, I can me. only imagine, you know, I had that wonderful canticle today um, as part of the divine office, you know, uh -huh. snow, snow and rain, bless the Lord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, creation, yeah. bless, bless the Lord. And knowing that you were coming on, I thought, I yeah. wonder what goes on in the interior life of Father Spitzer with all yeah. his knowledge of the natural world when he prays this part of the office. Well, and it certainly expands it considerably yeah, uh, because man. of course you just realize what a snowflake uh, is about, the crystalline structures and, you know, the various ways in which crystals interact. I mean, there's miracle upon miracle, if I can put it that way. I'm not mm -hmm. using it in a formal way, uh, but just so many orderly, beautiful, symmetrical, elegant kinds of things just in snow and rain mm. and so uh, it does make the whole thing come alive you see god's creative hand in the whole uh, dimension of it e even including uh what's called non-linear algebras non-linear mm. um uh, mathematics uh, which are chaos mathematics but it's really not chaos it mm. really functions according to a different set where you multiply uh, the same set of repetitions again and again and again inside 
a particular uh, um, you know shape, and then uh, you replicate that in a million different ways, and how beautiful it all comes out. And you start looking at it and you go, that's like a hibiscus, that's like a tree, that's like a cloud, mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. just kind of emulate all these patterns on your computer. It's truly amazing uh, how God operates. And of course, he left that hidden until nonlinear mathematics came about. And all of a sudden, we looked at that and went, wow, that's oh, amazing. Uh, yes. Yeah, and, God uh, even had a nonlinear plan in mind. <laughs> indeed. Uh Father, you of of course uh, can't see my image, so you're just going to have to imagine that I have the biggest fanboy grin on my face as I'm talking to you about this. <laughs> and I love that you mentioned algebra because I'm a, a third order Benedictine, an oblate, ah. and thankfully the um, the community I joined was traditional enough that I was allowed to hyphenate a Benedictine to my first name, and I chose Blessed Hermann von Reichenau, also known oh, as well, Blessed well, Hermann yeah, the well. Cripple. And as yeah. you know, he is yeah. single-handedly responsible for translating algebra from Arabic into Latin so that yeah. it could then reach the heights that it did in Christendom. So yeah, thank absolutely. you for that. <laughs> oh, no, that was a, that's a wonderful thought I had. I'll bet you do. Do you read some Arabic yourself? Do I? Sorry, say that again. Read some Arabic yourself? I do not, but uh, yeah. but I do understand some algebra, so oh, <laughs> I'm part, part of the way there. <laughs> I do. Look, I'm a total science nerd, so oh, it's a, an absolute great. delight to talk to you. And for fellow science nerds, of course, um, Father, you are on EWTN regularly, mm -hmm. but you also have the most wonderful apostolate. Uh, tell us about your website. Yeah, we have a little um, website called uh, the Magis uh, Center, or and um, essentially, you can go to magiscenter.com. That's spelled M-A-G-I-S, center.com. If you're interested in everything from philosophical proofs to, for the existence of God, all the way to the evidence from contemporary physics, like the Board of Lincoln Guth proof for entropy evidence, we've got a ton of evidence uh, from the fine tuning of initial conditions and universal constants in, in, in the universe and the interpretation of it, the debunking of the even the eternal multiverse, uh, just tons of stuff uh, in there that's very relevant to your, uh, uh, as uh, uh, you might call it, your basic nerdly scientific mind might, uh, oh, might uh, love. Uh, it's all there and it's all there in relation to faith including the evidence for the soul from contemporary near-death experiences, the scientific investigation shroud of Turin, et cetera. Glorious, absolutely glorious, Father. Thank you. Now, you've already mentioned that you are a priest. Have you always been Catholic, Father? Uh, I've been Catholic. Uh, uh, my mother, uh, my father was not a Catholic. My mother was a daily communicant, wonderful Catholic. And she communicated that a uh, great intuitive sense of faith to me in a very profound way. I could see uh, how much it meant to her. I could see the devotion uh, in her. But my mom was also a chemist. Uh, so she was, uh, as they say, uh, no one's fool in the science department. So she um, basically communicated, uh, you know, that nexus between faith and science to me. And also my dad, uh, who was uh, um, uh, an attorney, um, and had his own law firm and uh, some businesses, uh, but he was just a, a lover of electronics, and he had all these ham radio sets, and of course, he was pulling that stuff apart. There's electronics all over his office all the time, trap vertical antennas and beam antennas and, you know, all kinds of transducers. It was unbelievable. This place just it was like an electronics museum and I got, you know, able to just go right on in there. But um, so I did get, um, you know, the confluence uh, from them, but my mom's deep devotion, that really mattered to me. And I could, I just picked it up. I intuited it and I ran with it. You know, I had my days when, you know, I was in high school and I was getting presented with Sart and Camus right and left. And, you know, I was trying to get answers uh, I think this probably resembles your own experience. And I was just saying, is there any evidence for God from science out there? You know, mm -hmm. do we have anything? I know my mom has, you know, got faith and science kind of put together in her intuition. My dad does too, but uh, what's the, uh, what's the evidence? Anything pointing to God or does science disprove God? And people would just say, oh, it's a mystery. Don't worry about it. And I would just say, no, 
I just can't it's, not worry about it's it. It's not a good enough answer, isn't it? And it really uh-huh. bugs those of us with inquiring minds. Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 But you, you clearly then made the faith your own father. Was it a gradual transformation or was there a sp- spectacular yeah. incident that brought you back? Well, no, I mean, it was, uh, there were a few, you know, spike incidents, I might call them. Uh, yeah. You know, one of them, you know, I was at college and I was in my perpetual search for, you know, uh, evidence for God. And one day, um, you know, somebody came up and said, gosh, have you seen these, uh, um, these singularity equations? And, uh, you know, Hawking and Penrose, I, I never have so much as heard of a singularity equation or Hawking or Penrose, you know? So uh, I got an article, you know, which was oh, way over my head mathematically. I was a freshman in college at the time. I certainly did not have the mathematical preparation, but I had enough scientific insight so that I could begin to understand the significance of these um, uh, equations in terms of, you know, infinite curvature of space and time, uh, you know, producing uh, well, basically what's called a singularity in general relativity. And so that really gave me pause. And um, I thought, wow, there really is some evidence here um, uh, for God from science. now. Um, now that they have discovered some what's called negative pressure uh, in the universe in a form that's called um, vacuum energy or dark energy, um, that, um, you know, the old singularity equations don't work, but it was replaced by another one that was called the board of Lincoln and Guth proof, which to this day is a very, very intriguing proof, not only of a beginning of our universe, but a beginning of a finite multiverse <laughs> Um, Mm. that our universe is attached to. And then the eternal multiverse, uh, you know, that's really, you know, that that's outside of the domain of um, uh, BVG, but um, the eternal multiverse comes up with such absurdities as what's called Boltzmann brains and brief brains and a variety of other things that are (laughs) rather preposterous because if the Mm -hmm. eternal multiverse is true, well, gee whiz, uh, the two of us are... uh, we're Boltzmann brains, uh, almost mm-hmm. a flat out zero uh, probability that we would be who we are uh, in a carbon based universe of our size and spaciousness and, and, um, and mass density. So uh, we're, we're basically Boltzmann brains who think we're loaded up with memories. We think we're carbon based uh, life forms, but indeed uh, we're just uh, uh, you know, a, a brain that fluctuated into existence that mm-hmm. has the sense of being uh, in our universe. Now you look at that and you go, if that is the consequence mm-hmm. of any theory, bail on that theory. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> in other words, <laughs> I'm not a Boltzmann brain. I'm not a brief brain. I'm just plain carbon-based life form. Let's start from there. And any physical hypothesis that has me becoming a Boltzmann brain should be rejected out of hand. And so I would reject the eternal multiverse and all these things, I'll just put the, the, the story together is I began to see the implications of it. And then uh, mm-hmm. the second event happened, I was walking past a classroom and I heard this professor literally going proofs for the existence of God. You know, I stopped in a hurry and that proofs for the existence of God. I got to hear this. So I zoomed into the classroom, acted like I was in the class, you know, just went to the back of the class, looked like I was late. You know, finally at the end of the class, I, I was very intrigued by what this professor was saying. So I walked up, you know, I said, uh, well, I don't think you can prove God. And he says, oh yes, I can. I said, well, I, you know, I just, I, I don't think I got the uh, the first part of the, uh, uh, the, the proof that you were going through today. And he goes, well, there's a very good reason for that. You're not in this class. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know who you are, but uh, how about, I said, well, wait, can you prove these? And he says, I most certainly can, but you'll have to come back to the class uh, next semester and take the whole thing. I'm not going to do it here, especially for you. You're not even registered. So I said, Fantastic. oh, fair enough. So I did, and he did. And uh, those wow. two incidents got me kind of launched like a rocket ship. I thought, wow, there's a whole world out there I don't know about, this confluence of science and faith and philosophy. Uh, and I just dove in uh, with great passion and also theoretical interest. 
Amen. Father, I could uh, talk to you for hours on topics like this. Uh, so uh, you can imagine how loath I am to move on to our next subject. But oh, no. we are here to talk about St. Joseph, which is an equally wonderful subject. And I'm curious to, curious to know, uh, previous to the year of St. Joseph, did you have a, a devotion at all to St. Joseph in your faith? Life? I couldn't help it because my middle name is Joseph. So I'm Robert Joseph Spitzer, and my grandfather's uh, Van Ort's name was Joseph. And so uh, essentially, uh, uh, you know, I have these little statues of St. Joseph on, on my dresser when I was a little kid, you know, and so uh, uh, he was always included uh, in all the prayers uh, of intercession. So um, I, I did have it, but that was kind of, you know, my infant uh, St. Joseph uh, um, devotion, but uh, as I grew up, uh, you know, you always want to know who you were named after. So uh, mm -hmm. I basically began to study it more and more. And those dimensions really helped me uh, uh, in this year of St. Joseph to make it more impactful for some of the things that I gleaned from my more mature uh, uh, study and reading um, and prayer to St. Joseph. Wonderful. And then, of course, we are now uh, nearing the end of the year of St. Joseph. So I'm, I'm curious to know if the year of St. Joseph impacted you. Has it drawn you closer to St. Joseph? Yeah, I think in three ways, for sure. Um, you know, obviously, I'm in the evangelizing ministry, but I specifically, you know, are I'm trying to target young people who really do, you know, we know 49.2% of, uh, of these kids are leaving the church um, as fast as they can because they're not getting evidence uh, for God from either science or reason. They don't know um, what the evidence is. And, you know, that role of St. Joseph as the protector of the family, which, of course, in a first century Middle Eastern culture, you really did have to have a protector of the family. I mean, there were just nefarious people out there uh, who could just blast on into a household, which is why widows oftentimes, of course, they moved in with their sons, but if they didn't have a son, they had to find another uh, male relative. That's why Jesus even presents Mary to John uh, when he's on the cross, um, you know, as his mother and then um, John as her son uh, is because, you know, the idea um, you know, of leaving Mary alone without a male relative uh, was uh, unthinkable, um, you know, at, at the time. So the idea, you know, is that, yeah, I feel the same sort of protector role, um, you know, as an evangelist. I, I don't mm -hmm. want any kid to lose their faith. Uh, and so, you know, I, I get the most bizarre set of emails with the most crazy set of questions. But mm -hmm. these kids are downright sincere. And I don't know how I got on the list, but I'm definitely on the list of young people who, if you got any question on faith and science, ask Spitzer. So uh, I, I get these emails. And so um, I do answer them. I try to take the time to answer them. Sometimes I can't answer every question, but um, you know, I've given myself to making this uh, three websites, modulacenter.com, crediblecatholic.com, and purpose, purposefuluniverse.com. So these three websites are, uh, are really important. And I've got high school curricula, college curricula, um, even one that's going to be uh, launched with Perusia uh, on this whole intersection of faith and science. So it's, uh, that's, that's one of the roles. I, I, I just feel like, you know, I can't be the, uh, you know, I'm a physical protector. You know, anybody can hit a blind guy. Uh, but yeah. um, I certainly, uh, I can be an intellectual protector and I can be a spiritual protector. And so I found that to be a, a very beneficial thing, you know, a kind of a, an association there with Joseph. I think the other thing, uh, two other things, that would, one of them that really gets me is his humility. I mean, <laughs> I mean, to play a second fiddle, I mean, Mary is at the front of the line. And I think the reason that St. Joseph was chosen by God, not just by Mary, but by God there, because if God didn't approve, there wouldn't have been, that would have been it. So I'm figuring St. Joseph was definitely approved by God. But one of the reasons is, is he could play second fiddle. He could uh, be at the, at the re recess at the back of the, uh, of, of the uh, 
of the line and uh, Mary and Jesus, his own son, are basically in front of him all the time. Um, it's, it's so interesting to me that it is not Joseph, who is the natural teacher of the law, right? Mary would have taught Jesus his prayers. Joseph would have taught Jesus the law. And it's always interesting to me when they, you know, he didn't show up with the caravan it's there in the temple. Uh, you know, it's Mary who says, son, why, why'd you do this to us? I mean, normally it would be definitely the father, you know, hey, uh, why'd you do this to us? You know, and um, but it's not it's it's and so Joseph, in a way, he has the most remarkable humility in the world. Um, and I got to imitate that humility. I, I just want to be able to play second fiddle. I want to be able uh, to, you know, have that humility to just, you know, let God be in first place, let everybody have their place and not try to be pushing people out so I can be in the center. That gift of humility and Joseph's humility in particular, that was a real attraction. Still is it a, a real attraction. It's going to stick with me too. Mm -hmm. um, the, the third area that I think is, is compassion uh, because uh, definitely, you know, for him to find out, you know, well, Mary's pregnant and it isn't me. Hmm. You know, I mean, what am I going to do? You know, at, in first century Judaism, whoa, man, this would have been, you know, grounds for denouncement. Mm -hmm. You know, he could have just ended Mary. But of course, as I always say, God chose Joseph as well as Mary. And the reason he did was because he knew Joseph would say, I'm not going to do this to her. Um, you know, and then, of course, God very nicely gave Joseph a dream that enabled him to see, oh, okay, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what that means, Joseph probably said, but I'm, I'm trusting in this and I'm going with it. And what, what's so interesting to me is the fact that, you know, um, I do a lot of work on these Eucharistic miracles and things of that nature. And um, you try and get a DNA profile from those hosts and they have everything. They have hemoglobin, they have a blood type, they have all kinds of things. But whenever you try to elucidate the genetic profile on those hosts, you get a big blank. There's just no genetic profile. And that's very interesting. That's so I think, and, but he again had the humility to say, okay, um, you know, I'm going to be the stepfather. Uh, you know, I'm going to be the foster father, if I can put it that way. And I'm not going to be the main father. Okay. Uh, and then the compassion to say, I'm not going to let Mary, I'll take the hit for Mary if anybody should discover this, right? Because you're betrothed. So he could, he really didn't have to take that much of a hit because people would have thought, oh, they just had relations when they were betrothed, which was not a problem uh, in first century Judaism. So the, um, the idea then would be that, uh, you know, he does have this huge compassion uh, for people that he's looking uh, you know, he's, you know, for, with that big, huge heart, he's looking for the, the benefit, the good uh, of not only Mary, but his son. And, you know, because if you made an accusation against Mary, you know what you would have been calling your son. I mean, and he was not about to do that, to say that he was an illegitimate child. And uh, which, of course, would have been a horrible sentence for dear Jesus. But uh, at the same time, uh, then God, of course, when Joseph says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to divorce her quietly, that was his deal. So yeah. then God comes in with the dream and says, don't worry, take her as your wife. And so he gets this revelation because he had the compassion, the faith to say, you know, I'm going to I'm going to divorce her quietly. I'm not going to, you know. Yeah. Uh, do anything terrible to her, to my son. And then God says, no, don't do that. Uh, take her as your wife into your household. And that's exactly what he does. And when you really think about it, boy, you know, um, Joseph did a good job teaching Jesus the law because that was Jesus's initial foundation, right? He's a boy, he's a human being, boy, as well as of course he knows the law, you know, in his divine personhood. But he also is a, a true God and true man. 
So as that boy, Joseph is giving him this law. And, you know, I'm a teacher by nature, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know I can't help myself. So uh, in any case, um, it's all of those components, the compassion, the teacher, uh, the protector, and of course, above all, and most importantly, uh, the humility, which St. Ignatius says, you know, we can't have too much humility. True enough. And St. Joseph is the biggest example of that uh, besides our Lord that I can think of. Wow. Thank you so very much for sharing all of those musings with us, Father. That's uh, some truly beautiful thoughts there. Well, it is now time for us to have the wonderful joy and honor of praying the rosary with you, Father. Yes. So I'm going to hand over to you once more so that okay. you can lead us in the rosary. Absolutely. And being that this is Tuesday in the great uh, country of Australia there, we will go ahead and do the Sorrowful Mysteries. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For an increase in faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony of our Lord in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, our Lord is scourged at the pillar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, our Lord is crowned with thorns. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, our Lord carries his cross to Calvary. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, our Lord is crucified and dies on Mount Calvary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <clears throat> blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs of mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that, that we may be, we made, may be made worthy of the promises, of, promises Christ. of Christ. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating on these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they uh, contain and obtain what they promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, what an honor and a joy to pray with you, Father Spitzer. Thank you very much for that. Oh, the same honor back to you. Uh, you just really are very prayerful, no question. Thank you very much. Well, it is now time for our devotional reading for the day, and then afterwards we'll move on to the litany. Uh, so, of course, it is the 21st day, and as always, we're turning to the book the glories of St. Joseph, and it's a big thank you to the monks at St. Joseph's Abbey in Flavigny in France who have given us permission to do this reading. 21st day, the patience of St. Joseph. Appointed by God himself to conceal and hide the ineffable mystery of the incarnation, Joseph sheltered it under his humility and charity as beneath a veil of delicate linen of heavenly blue, scarlet, and purple. Then, so as to shield it from all inclemencies, he covered it again with the impermeable cloak of his infinite patience. 
in admiring the patience of this great saint, the church, calling it a mirror, invites us to contemplate in it the greatness of his virtue. To be patient is to bear without complaining or being discouraged the evils that press upon us no matter how prolonged they may be, adversities arising from, uh, from circumstances, from unjust behaviour or ill treatment by others, the attacks both interior and exterior of evil spirits, and even the apparent rejection from God who, as Job tells us, is pleased to train his servants to the point of tormenting them in an extraordinary way. Thou tormentest me wonderfully. To be patient, says St. Thomas Aquinas, is also to react victoriously against the sadness which arises from the actual presence of evil, and to maintain throughout a holy joy within one's heart. How patient St. Joseph was from this double point of view. We know nothing of what he suffered in Nazareth or in the land of Egypt, which was an exile for him, but we are certain that he suffered a great deal, both through the privations of his exile and through the activities of men and of demons. Then there was his constant concern to take upon himself all the sorrows and distress and to let nothing get so far as to affect either Mary or Jesus. His patience was a shield which received and blunted all hostile deeds. His vocation, his happiness, consisted in sacrificing himself daily for the benefit of Jesus and Mary. In seeing St. Joseph toiling as a workman at his task and suffering as one oppressed, it was not easy to realize the eminence of his virtue, no more than the, treasure, the treasures hidden by his humble and laborious life. One did not know that the soul of this poor workman was full of radiance and ecstasies and that his home was a foretaste of heaven. Let us acclaim the patience of this great saint and imitate it so far as it is within our power. Today, freed from the obscurity of the present life, it shines with a wonderful brilliance. It demands the special praise decreed for it by the church. St. James informs us that patience gives to good works the final mark of perfection. It is certain that the devil tries by all possible means to weary and to tire the patience of God's servants so that they let go and do not pursue to the end the work for which God has placed them in a certain place in a certain combination of circumstances. It is up to them, aware of the divine will, to keep their courage beyond defeat through trust and to hold on without weakening. Be patient, St. James urges, until the coming of the Lord, which is at hand. So the duration of patience is that of human life, but that is so short and each day brings us closer to the coming of the Lord. So let us be patient. For his part, St. Paul says that tribulation worketh patience, and patience trial, and trial hope, and, he adds, hope confoundeth not. So patience strengthens hope, and that in turn supports patience in showing it the crown that is assured. Ah, how deep a look St. Joseph cast on the brevity of his life, and what boundless hope arose in his heart. But he had to suffer without respite and without end for Jesus and Mary. He would have accepted suffering on those terms, to suffer through love of those so lovable that was his very life, that was his happiness. St. Joseph's Bird in one house of the Little Sisters of the Paul in Montreal, there was a canary whose song cheered the hearts of the old folk. One day, however, Beauty caught a cold and died. Looking at the empty birdcage, the patients voiced their concern. We will all get bored to tears. We must get another bird. Fair enough. Ask St. Joseph for one. 
an old artist sketched an outline of the bird they wanted with notes cascading from its half open beak and wrote about the drawing, good St. Joseph, send us a songbird quickly. Prayers were joined to the request and it was very clear that the old people were entirely confident of a favorable reply. Mm -hmm. One warm sunny morning when the windows were wide open, a pretty little white bird came and landed on the table of one of the patients who missed beauty very greatly. He welcomed the visitor with joy and offered it some of his lunch, which the bird accepted with alacrity. Very soon, by mutual agreement, bird and patient were eating off the same dish. A postulant little sister arrived on the scene just in time to enjoy this charming sight. She tried to grab the bold guest, but it took win wing through the same window through which it had entered. A few minutes later, it returned, perhaps to finish its rudely interrupted meal. But this time, the postulant was more deft, and soon the cage was adorned with the most gracious of prisoners. It's St. Joseph's bird, the old folks said, whenever they told its story to visitors. And from far and near, people came to see St. Joseph's bird. Free apples. In a home of the little sisters of the poor, Sister Cook was short of apples, which were rare and expensive that year. In a confident gesture, she set an apple at the foot of a statue of St. Joseph. A few days later, another home of theirs received a telephone call notifying them that a truck full of apples had accidentally overturned on the road and their help in picking up the apples would be appreciated. Thus, they inherited a truckload of apples. The Memorare to St. Joseph, composed by Pope Pius IX. Remember, O most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary, that never has it been known that anyone who asked for thy help and sought thy intercession was left unaided. Full of confidence in thy power, I hasten to thee and beg thy protection. Listen, O foster father of the Redeemer, to my humble prayer, and in thy goodness, hear and answer me. Amen. Thank you once again, everyone, for giving me the honour and privilege of reading the devotions to you each day. And so now we come to our litany, and uh, we are praying, of course, with Father Robert Spitzer, so it's uh, obviously normal to have the cleric lead the prayers, but uh, Father does not know the litany of St. Joseph off by heart, and therefore it falls to me. And so in this most unusual circumstances, I beg, Father, your permission and blessing to lead this prayer. And, and may Almighty God bless you and send his Holy Spirit down upon you so that the words you say and the prayers you utter may be efficacious in the lives of all the people around you, especially the prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph to change our lives and to convert us interiorly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. All right, let us begin now with the litany of St. Joseph. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, the Father of heaven. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, 
pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph, most just, pray for us. Joseph, most chaste, pray for us. Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. Joseph, most courageous, pray for us. Joseph, most obedient, pray for us. Joseph, most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and, and prince of all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Father Robert Spitzer, it has been an absolute honour and an absolute delight to speak with you today. And thank you so much for giving us so much of your time. Oh, no, the honour is mine. And of course, the time is the Lord's. So thank Amen. you very, very much. Well, I'm quite hopeful that you might be able to spare some time for our live participants because I'm certain that they would love to uh, have a chat, say hello, thank you for your work, and yes. maybe even ask a question. Can you hang Absolutely. around? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much, Father. And again, thank you to everyone joining us for the consecration and for watching the recordings. You, you, you honor us by doing so. But that's enough from us today. So farewell. And may God bless you all richly through the intercession of St. Joseph. Amen. Amen.